Before we talk about the new album, Matador, I'd, I'd like to go back a little bit. Okay. Uh, when you were younger, you lived in the United States for five years or, or so. Do you have a musical memory of this time? Sesame Street. Okay. I think. Yeah, just the, the songs from Sesame Street, I think. Uh, and, uh, and the Muppets. Okay. Yeah, it's my first musical memories. And then uh, what did it do to you? What was music something that was prevalent in your household? Uh, yeah, no, I think I think as a as a kid, yeah, I think there'd be a lot of uh, family gatherings and um, Christmas and different holidays where we'd we'd get, you know, my uncles would come over and and quite a few of my uncles used to play guitar okay. and acoustic guitar and so they'd sort of, you know, have too much to drink and start playing kind of uh, Eddie Cochran songs okay. and, and Don McLean and. You know, uh, John Lennon and stuff. So yeah, it was kind of cool. What what um, compelled you to go into music yourself then? Was it was it seeing your uncles? Was it? I don't know. I think that was just probably just part of life, really. And then I, I remember my uncle leaving. Uh, one of my uncles left a, a record collection uh, at my house, at my mum's house, when he went travelling for like six months. And so there was this these four or five boxes of classic records. Uh, that I just started kind of going through and finding and new new records and, and stuff that I'd never heard before. Mm -hmm. You know, Sex Pistols and Patti Smith and Blondie and uh, JJ Kale and, and, and The Who and uh, yeah, it just kind of, I guess it just opened my eyes mm -hmm. and it was like a light bulb moment. W was there maybe one record that stood out for you? Uh, I don't know, I, th I remember uh, yeah, I mean the Sex Pistols record was kind of just had this energy to it, and um, you know, but then equally kind of, uh, you know, um, yeah, this, this, just a few of the Who records were really kind of really hit hard. You know, in, like in the what kind way? of guitar, we're well, just in the sort of the, the power of the guitars and and the rock and roll, you know, and mm -hmm. I think I just sort of kind of thought, yeah, that's kind of I want to do that too. Okay. Yeah. Was it around the same time that you started writing your own music? It's kind of, no, probably, I don't know, I started probably writing a few years after that, you know, that, that was probably when I was like 10, 11, 12 okay. sort of thing, and then kind of met a few people at school and we started to play instruments and, um, yeah, so I d definitely wrote a few songs kind of quite young, maybe 13, 14, mm. but they were rubbish. But yeah. well, what did it do for, for you, what, this writing process? Um, I don't know, I just think, you know, it, we did covers, you know, when we started out, like probably most bands do. But there's a sort of real buzz you get when you play your own song to a crowd. And they, and they really love it, you know. And I think that sort of buzz uh, just sort of turns into a bit of an addiction, you know. And then you just, you just want to have that feeling all the time of, of writing a song that people can sort of connect to. Uh, you know, I, I, I preferred that than just playing other people's mm. songs. You know? Do you remember the first song that um, that you were really proud of? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, it probably wasn't before Supergrass. Okay. Because they're all, I mean, they're all pretty ropey. They're all just mm. sort of experimenting as a kid and, you know, I used to have, there's a song called uh, uh, The Girl With The, Re the Removable Face. Okay. And um, Harvey the Accountant. Uh, a place in Birmingham, and other classic titles. Uh, they're all just rubbish. They're kind of just school kids just messing around, really. They're all kind of comedy lyrics, really, just sort of messing around and, and being surreal. But um, I guess it wasn't until, you know, we got into Supergrass and maybe the, the, the sort of the real songs started to come. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. What changed then at this point? What, what made it more uh, serious, in, in a sense, for you? Uh, just probably experience and just playing. I mean, we used to play a lot, uh, you know, around Oxford, and and then even in my first band, the Jennifers, we played. You know, we got in a uh, in a little like Ford Transit van, and and we'd go around the country and playing little gigs here and there, and you know, just making fifty quid and then driving back home. Um, and I guess doing that for a few years, you just kind of get used to it, you know. And like anything, you just get to a point where you want to take it up a level. And I think when I, when I got to 16, 17, it was just time to, 
to take it up a level, you know, and, and, and start writing for real. Would your approach to the songwriting change as well then? Uh, I guess so, but that was more about, you know, the, the guys in the band, you okay. know, and being, being in Supergrass from, like I said, 16 years old, it was a different dynamic to like the school bands that, we'd, that I'd been in. Mm. Um, so yeah, you know, we, we, we kind of all, you know, I guess quite early on we all bonded over over cool music, like I said, like The Who and, right. and but even stuff like kind of, um, you, know, you know, comedy stuff, you know, Derek and Clive and, and sort of, you know, The Muppets and stuff, but mm -hmm. even like Frank Zappa, all the kind of weird shit as well we were really into uh, when we were kids. So, um, you know, I don't know where our songwriting style came from. And then, well, if, if you take it all the way to up till now, you, you mentioned that addictive feeling that you that you got from writing a song and playing it is is it still the same now yeah completely yeah i wouldn't do it if it wasn't the same buzz you know mm. uh you know uh, I, i guess this sort of um you know when you're a kid though you have a real sort of like a uh, uh no fear right. you know so you kind of You know, it's kind of easy to make a fool of yourself and mm -hmm. not worry about it, or just to put something out there. Maybe, you should, maybe after having done a lot of records, you know, um, you have to deal with. I, I've, it's quite hard sometimes to just create something and then say, "Here you go, have a listen." <laughs> you know, judge me. Uh, you know, it's kind of quite right, weird. Right. You know, you kind of put yourself on the line, but um, but that's also what I love. That kind of kind of being on the edge of your seat. You don't know if people are going to like it or hate mm. it or whatever, but, but just, just do what sort of comes naturally, you know? So it was just it's still the same buzz, you know, for write a good tune. I don't know that it's very good until people hear it live and they respond and, and, and they get into it. If, if you, well, you obviously were quite successful with Supergrass, but if you then look at um, the way you, you um, started your solo albums, was it then liberating in a sense that that pressure that you kind of alluded to wasn't there anymore? Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of. I, did, I, did, I guess there was nothing, there was no reference point, mm -hmm. you know, when I started on my own. Um, you know, yeah, I had a lot of experience in the band, but nothing can really prepare you for being on your own. And, right. Um, it's a totally different setup. So, um, but the, the first thing I noticed was just writing was really, It was really enjoyable. It was okay. it was a great feeling to uh, to just have that freedom to explore and to experiment and um, yeah, yeah, and just try some stuff that I'd never done before. You know, that's always the main thing. It's just to kind of keep challenging yourself, mm -hmm. sort of as a, as a human being, and keep sort of exploring and right. finding new ways of doing stuff and uh, and just and, and make it fun, man. It's got to be fun. It's got to mm -hmm. be enjoyable. Otherwise, I, I just couldn't do it. And, and during this, uh, the Supergrass period then, would you have certain ideas that maybe were too experimental that, that you couldn't use for the band but would store for, for uh, when you went solo? No, not really. I, I think I sort of, I really started again when, when, when it all went solo. I kind of just, you know, they were all sort of new songs, new mm. ideas. And uh, No, I think Supergrass was a very sort of accommodating band for that. I think we could always experiment. We did, you know. Each record was pretty different and um but you know, it's just a whole different setup being in that band and, and uh um yeah, I, I suppose it was just really exciting to kind of explore where you might go on your own, you know. Mm -hmm. And um I didn't know if it would work. I didn't know what it would sound like, but it you know, so far so good. <laughs>